Well, hello and welcome to Tech Garage. I'm going to show you a design of uh, Daniel Nunez Vortex coil, the ABHA, ABHA coil, I guess they call it. Um, we have constructed one. It's the larger design, not the mini coil, but the bigger one. And uh, the reason that we constructed the bigger one this time was so that we can put an electrolyzer dead center. As you can see in the picture right now, we have the top of a mason jar with the uh, with the electro the electrolyzer design in there the design of the electrolyzer isn't complete yet but the whole point of this this process here is to be able to to split the water into HHO gas um, with this coil with it being in the middle of the vortex we have a strong magnetic field there and I'm hoping that that might aid the uh, production of HHO gas that's the idea another actually I have the plans for a, a a generator called the Hydrostar, and it uses a uh, a torrid core, a standard torrid core, not a not a vortex coil, but a standard torrid core wrapped. And th the torrid core is wrapped and goes in the water with the uh, in the electrolyzer. It's part of the electrolyzer itself, and so the magnetics of that coil actually influence, or it's part of the uh, of the uh, of the actual electrolyzer. There's a lot of effort in making that coil much easier, but I wanted to use this because we know we have high voltage coming off in this coil, and if our, our capacitance is not so great, we might be able to get the thing to resonate in a reasonable frequency. And if so, maybe we can actually get some high voltage to drive some drive some uh, electrolysis action. So what I'm going to show you now, I'm going to walk over here and I'm going to turn this unit on, turn the amplifier on. We're driving it with a Sansui. AU517 amplifier which is 60 watts per channel very old school amplifier the thing's probably 30 years old but uh, I've kept it in good shape 60 watts per channel the 717 Sansui was a 100 watt per channel amplifier uh, the design of that amplifier is a totally separate I mean you have two completely separated amplifiers from the power supply all the way through in that in that uh, thing I believe it's using standard bipolar transistors. I doubt it's using MOSFETs. It was pretty old for that design, for that technology. It might, but I doubt it. But it seems to work okay. I can drive uh, drive voltage. The, the voltage that I see out of my amplifier with the meter, it's currently the meter is hooked on the output, but if I hook the meter to the input, I see about a 5-volt signal. And, of course, that's not accurate in, in terms of absolute amount, but... Uh, if I use the same meter and look at the output, I get 125. So we got a factor of five on the voltage. The amount of power going into the coil and the amount of power being drawn from the coil is actually over unity or not. I would suspect it is, but I don't know the answer to that because I don't have enough meters to uh, to gauge it. And the meters I have are would not be accurate anyway. So really, the only way to do it would be to put the scope on there, which I can. I just haven't done that yet. So I'm gonna go over here and fire this thing up and illustrate a couple of things about the coil. Some anomalous asymmetrical spacing in one of the ribs between the gap, gaps between the ribs. Well, my cell phone keeps timing out so I have to keep stimulating it to, to generate my signal. So when I turn it on, there we have 7800 hertz is what we're driving it with right now. We're driving it with a sine wave we drive it with a square wave, our voltage jumps up slightly, about 2 volts roughly, not much. So that's the square wave, we've got 38.9 volts. There's a sine wave, we've got 37.5. So, you know, a volt or two, not much difference, which is kind of surprising. I would have thought a square wave would have been much better. On the other hand, even though I'm driving it with a square wave, that amplifier may be attenuating those corners. It's most likely doing that. I doubt that amplifier is going to give us such a such a good response on those sharp corners of a square wave that it would come through. So we probably, even though we're we're driving it with a sine wave coming out of the signal generator, most likely by the time it comes out of the amplifier, it's probably rounded off quite a bit. And that's what we see in the scope but I don't know if the inductance is what's causing that phenomenon or not. And so we've got 38 volts on the output. If we look at the scope, I'm going to switch over and look at the scope now. The scope right now is showing approximately, oh, 
about 150, 125 to 150 volts peak to peak on the oscilloscope. Let me swing this camera around so you can see that. There's the amplifier. And here's our scope. Alright. So, that's with the load. The load is 19 LEDs. They're, they're, it's, you know, there's a 19 LED globe there that, that uh, is meant to go in a 110 volt socket. Only 19 LEDs. Not very bright at that. But that's the load we're using. We've tried a compact fluorescent, and the compact compact fluorescent load here does not work either in the socket driven electrically, or if we put it in the middle of the vortex, magnetically driven. It does not excite that compact fluorescent enough to glow. But uh, what I want to show you here on the scope is we've got about a 150 volt peak to peak signal when our signal generator decides it wants to work with us. And if I take the load off, see we have we have 400 volts peak to peak here, maybe even slightly more than that. Our meter only reads 120 volts with no load, but if I change the voltage scale from 200 volts to 700 volts, then we get much more. So turning the load back on. All righty, there we go. First thing I wanted to point out is the asymmetrical nature of these 12 ribs and 12 slots in each rib design, this Daniel Lunia's design. When you complete, well first of all when you start winding these coils, you start in one slot and then you advance to the next one up, and you advance to the next one from there up, so you're moving over by one but you're moving up by one as well, so you're advancing from, from the even slot to one slot up. That's the pattern of the wire. So as you follow that, if you do that all the way around, when you get to the end, the last winding, you will find that you're going to have to move two. You're going to have to skip two up in order to keep the pattern going. So the, the gap between two ribs, out of, out of 12 ribs, the spacing and the, the, uh, the, the gap between that you have to follow for the pattern between one of the two sets of ribs is going to be a, a, an increment of two as opposed to one, which all the rest of them have. So that does change the symmetry of the coil somewhat, not dramatically, but somewhat. I, actually, this is the very first attempt at building one of these coils, and we ran out of wire. We, uh, we assumed it was going to be 25 feet for the mini VO, POE coil, so we cut it that way, and unfortunately uh, we didn't have nearly enough to do uh, to do all both, both clockwise and counterclockwise windings, but the asymmetry pattern is also present in this one as well. And this only has half the windings on it, so this one this this coil here has the same asymmetrical pattern. I'm sure they all will if you build it with 12 ribs and 12 slots in each rib. What else are you going to have? It's the same idea. I haven't seen anybody discuss that issue. Whether it's important or not, I don't know, but nobody has brought that issue up. I did see one YouTube video where some asymmetrical characteristic was discussed, and it's been a while since I've seen it, so I don't know if he was referring to this design or some other design, but I did want to also show you this uh, electrolyzer design that I'm working on. This is a pint size mason jar, and I've got an electrolyzer design started, and it fits perfectly within the middle of this coil. The whole purpose of that is so that the magnetic field will be centered in the middle of that uh, electrolyzer. And I wanted to use uh, wire as opposed to plates to disrupt the magnetic field of the coil minimally, so I didn't have to worry about uh, plates interfering with the magnetic field of that vortex coil. These small, their stainless steel wires are very small, and I, I increased the number of them compared to the water for gas design that this quart size mason jars come in, but I'm hoping that this will be enough volume, at least for an experiment, to uh, generate sufficient amount of HHO gas to, uh, to drive an 11 horsepower generator engine. But it may not be, but this is our experiment, this is what we're, we're geared to going, geared towards trying. So hopefully we'll be able to see some good results from doing 
doing that with this design once we finish it, which we're pretty close to doing. So that's pretty much it for our initial video from Tech Garage. Thanks for watching.